Hello and welcome to a new Google Sheets video in Practical Sheets. Actually, it's a Google Forms and Google Apps Script video today. I'm going to show you a very, very simple system where based on a form, you can create a folder and a set of files if you wish. So you, in this case, you just put an email. And when you put this email and submit the form, it will automatically create a folder. It will create a file and it will give you permission for example, in this case, you are a customer, let's say. So I can create my, just by sending the form, I will create a shared folder that I will also be able to access and maybe, I don't know, upload pictures, have a Google Sheet that is also shared. So let's see it in action before we begin doing it from scratch. So here I have a folder called customers in my drive and let's add a new customer. I'm going to fill out this form here with an email. And once I submit it, let's go back to our customers. Here it has created a new folder with the email. We could change this in the future, maybe the name or here add new fields, a name, uh, a category or something and change this folder however we want. And if I go inside the folder, it has created a Google Sheets. And in this case it's blank. But the important thing to show you is that it has shared it with the customer. Both the file and the folder have been shared with the customer. So if I see here and go and see and share, I can see that I have also shared with that specific user. So with just sending form, I have done all this process, automated all this process that maybe you have to do it manually in your organization. I hope it helps. And before you start, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you want to go further, you can support me in the Patreon page where you can also download the template so you don't have to write any code. You just have it there and you can use it immediately. So let's begin. The first thing we're going to do is to create the Google form. So we can do it by form.new and we're going to name it create a custom. If I click here, once I create my, my name and I go here, it will give the same name to the file. So it's good for now. For the moment, I don't need any questions. The first thing I'm going to need is the email of the customer. Then we'll see if we have time to add new things. For now, given that I only need the, cust the customer email, I could do it two ways. I could create a question, a, si a simple text and validate it for email, but there's an easier way. We'll just go to responses, sorry. We'll just go to settings and here in responses, I'll activate this first option, collect email addresses. If I go to questions, then you see I have a first question here. I can delete this one and a form in theory cannot have any question, but now that I gave it the option of, of the email, now I have one. So this is the only thing I need for now to start. The second thing, I'm going to go to my script editor and start creating. It now, remember that we could do this two ways. I could do it from a Google Sheets or I could do it from a Google Forms. I think that we don't need to touch Google Sheets in this project for now. So inside my Google script, I'm going to need now two other things. The first thing I'm going to need is a function I'm going to execute once my form is sent. So I'm going to, I can give it any name I want. We could call it create customer or create client or whatever. The important thing here is that I'm going to between my parentheses, I'm going to give it an argument that normally the, the normal convention is E, but it could be whatever. It could be event. E stands for event. Let's leave it E. That's what you're going to find in most tutorials and most places online. Okay. So for now, I could do anything. I just can say console log. It's working. I don't need anything. Going to save it and the second thing with this that in order for this to work if i hit run here i'm going to have a mistake an error why because i don't have any e this e needs that this is called from an activator actually it does work but it would not work is if i say console log e because e in this moment is not defined let's save and run and it's not an error, but it says that it's undefined. Okay. Once I start adding more lines, it will give me an error. 
So now I need to create the trigger. So I'm going to our triggers, click a trigger. I only have one function, so I don't need to choose any. I'll, I'm going to leave this. I don't have any more options. And here I will leave it from form. And in the event type, I'm going to select on form submit and hit save. I'll select my account and just accept. Now we can test it. So go here. We're going to preview it and send an email. Let's submit. And in order to see if it has been successful, I'm going to go to executions. And here I can see that I execute, I run my create customer function from my trigger and it was completed. And if I click here, I can see my logs. So it's working and I have my console log. So what I want to see in this console log is the methods um, I can access from my event. So I can access to string, I can access out mode, but the one that matters to me is this response. And this response has all of these functions. So this is what, what I'm going to work with here. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it as a comment. So we have it as a reference. Let's paste this here and close the comment. And now I know that my E can have a response and my response can have these methods. Okay. Let's zoom again. So the first thing I'm going to need for the moment, the only thing I'm going to need for the moment is this get respond an email. I don't need anything else. So let's say console log a e dot get respondent email and close parenthesis because this is a function. When it's a function, I always need to close it with parenthesis. Let's save and let's run it again. Submit another response and put my email again. Submit it. Let's go to our executions. This failed. Something did not work. The thing is, when I start communicating with forms or with any other service, I need to give some permissions. Get respond an email. So my error here was that I didn't call the response. First is it got it has to be e dot response dot get respondent email. Remember that get respondent email is a function of response. So this should be e dot response dot get respondent email. So let's save it and let's try it one more time. I submit it, we go to our executions and it co completed successfully. Let's wait just a second. Click again, and here I have my email. So now I have my first information and I can use this information. What could I do with this? For example, I could create order for the customer with the with this email. I could create a file for the customer with this email. I could also take this email and put it in a, in a log of my customers. This I could also do. But today I want to focus more on the file creation than any other thing. So. Here in my drive, I'm going to create a folder that's called customers. And here in this file is where I want to organize my folders and my files for each customer. I'm going to copy this ID and I'm going to access this folder. Zoom again. I'm going to create a folder bar folder or master folder if you want. And Let's, this could be a constant and I could call it with drive up dot get folder by ID and the ID is the one I copied I'm going to put it inside quotation marks and from this master folder I could create a new folder for this particular customer so I could say master folder dot create file sorry create folder and the folder I will give it a name and the name will be the email that we already saw we have here with this e response get responded email. So I could put this instead of email or better yet, I could create a constant or a variable called email and assign this. And we have it. Let's save. I have a problem here with the parentheses. I have double parentheses. That's okay. Let's save and let's submit. So again, put it here mail let's submit let's see if 
my folder was created and it's not created. Why? If I go here to my executions, I'm going to see an error. Why? Because I have not given permissions to my trigger to access drive. How do I do this? There are several ways of doing it. I like one way that is creating a function called permissions. This function, I will run it just one time or anytime I do a copy of this project, I will run it the first time. So I'm going to connect with drive up and do whatever. I could get this folder, but I'm not going to do anything with this folder. I'm just going, the, the important thing is that I, I access drive up. So it asks me permissions to access drive up and the same I'm going to do with form up, form up dot get active form. That's it. I'm going to save. I'm going to run this permissions function. It's going to ask me for the permissions. Let's review it. Again, I have to do the same. Go to my account and click in advanced. Go to the project that I had, haven't given it a title yet. Allow. And now it should work. I can give a project a name. Customer folders. And one last, one more time. Let's click our mail. Let's submit. And let's go to our customers and it did create our folder. Okay, so we're now one step further in our project. So now that we know that we, with the data of the form, we can create files, folders, and others, then we can <laughs> let our imagination flow. For example, we could create a new file, a new sheets file, a new docs file, a new slides, whatever for this uh, particular customer. For example, I could have create a new sheets, for example. It's not complicated. I could go to my master, to my new folder. Actually here, I could store this folder in a variable. Let's call this customer folder. And inside my customer folder, I could create a new file. Customer folder, create file. The way I can create it, first I need to create a new sheet. So how do I create a new sheet? I go to my sheets app, spreadsheet app, dot, I would say create. And I could put a name. Again, the name could be the same email. And this will be my file or my sheet. Let's call it SS. And now I'm going to move this SS that was created in my, in normally in the root folder so I could say ss.move and what I need from this spreadsheet is its ID so I'm going to get this ID this is the way which I then can take this ID and use it in drive to move the, the file because this SS is just the spreadsheet document but in order to convert it or to use it as a file I'm going to need the ID so I'm going to call this SSID and now I can go to my drive app and say get file by id now i have the ssid perfect and i could call this file and now i can do with this file whatever i want change the name move it copy it uh, delete it whatever so i could say file move to and now i'm going to move it to my master folder so again the sequence of steps is that I create a spreadsheet. It always creates it in the root. Then with the ID of this spreadsheet, I'm going to go to drive up and say, hey, please help me move this file, the, the location of this file to this folder. That's it. So let's say, let's try it again with this other email. Submit and I create the folder and then let's see. But before being able to do this, I need to give permissions to my sheet also. So I could go spreadsheet up dot whatever. It could be the same open by ID. Spreadsheet up. What can I do? Spreadsheet up. Flush maybe. Let me see if this, this works. Let's save and let's run our permissions. Even if it has an error, still before running, it's going to ask me for the permission. So it doesn't matter the, the command I give it. So let's say hello. And it didn't give me any error. So perfect. Now let's try it again. Okay. So let's give it a mail 
and then I could put here a plus one so I could identify it. Let's submit. And here, let's see. Now I have my folder. And if I go here, I don't have the sheets. Let me see. It did create it. And it went to custom. Actually, it did. Actually, it created in customers, but not in my folder. So I shouldn't create it in the master folder, but in the customer folder that we, we stored in a variable. So customer folder. Again, let's do it again. So I have the second one, I go here, and my sheet should move in any moment here, okay? So I could, again, your imagination may run wild. We, for example, could take a, a template of the customer file, or it could be a slide, it could be a Google Doc, and it could bring it here so the customer then can access it. So the, this is what I want next, for the customer to be able to access it. So I'm going to give him permission for this is not my customer folder, only this specific folder. Okay. So now that I have my customer folder, let's see how do we give him permissions. So let's go to customer folder dot. Here I could add an editor. So I could say let's add an editor and this editor will be my the email. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to do it again. I'm going to delete all this. Let's do it with my normal email. So to see if I receive the, um, the notification. Let's see. So here it creates it. If I go here and I see the permissions, it says that it already shared. If I go to my email, my personal email, you can see it here, practical sheets and Practical Sheets invite me to collaborate. So now the customer has access to this, to all the files inside this folder. So this works really nice. Now that we've done the email, then I could add different things. For example, I could add here. Now I could start out. It could start to get interesting because I could add the name. I could add uh, pictures. I could add much more things. So I'm going to leave it as it is for now. And if you like it, then maybe we could do a part two. We could add more information. We could add some uh, the picture of the customer and then maybe insert it in the sheet or maybe fill out a template. I don't know. I think this is just an exercise. Maybe no one would like it, maybe a lot. Let's hope it is useful for some of you. So as always, I hope you liked it. And if you like it, please just a thumbs up or subscribing to the channel or if you want to go further and support me in the Patreon page so you can download also the this uh, form and all the code and everything, please go ahead. Thanks for all the patrons I have. Thanks for all of my patrons. This uh, My gratitude is difficult to explain. So thanks a bunch. I mean it. I hope all of this is useful for some of you. See you next time.